Apple's upcoming 2024 iPad lineup is looking like it's going to be the best we've seen in many years with multiple new models coming soon, but as of right now, which ones within the current lineup are actually worth buying, how do they compare, and which ones should you absolutely avoid while we wait for the new models? Let's jump right into the first question by laying out precisely which iPads we actually have right now. Starting from the bottom, we have the iPad 10 for $450, the iPad mini 6 for $500, the iPad Air 5 for $600, which I'm using as the teleprompter right now, the 11-inch iPad Pro for $800, and the 12.9-inch iPad Pro for $1,100. However, I do want to mention that a bunch of these iPad models are on sale for $100 off right Right now on Amazon, like the iPad 10 for only $350, which is a killer deal. So be sure to check the links in the pinned comment below for the best prices on each iPad. Now, in terms of which models are worth buying, the good thing to know is that they all share the same new modern design language, other than the outdated iPad 9, which is actually still in Apple's lineup and only $250 on Amazon. So it's great for those going on a budget. But personally, Personally, I think it's totally worth spending the extra $100 for the iPad 10 because it gets a bunch of new features that make it a lot more like the more expensive models. For example, it's got an edge-to-edge -edge display with rounded corners all around, which looks amazing and very immersive compared to the old boxy style. It finally has speakers on top, which means it has stereo audio, which I would argue is a must when using your iPad in landscape mode for watching videos and gaming. It's also got a modern USB-C port to match what we have on the new iPhone 15s, but the biggest downside is that the one on the budget iPad 10 is limited to the same very slow 480 megabits per second transfer speed as the previous iPad, while the iPad mini goes up to 5 gigabits per second, the Air goes up to 10, and the Pros have up to 40 with Thunderbolt ports, which are so much more usable with docks and accessories. The iPad 10 also has the big disadvantage of not supporting the Apple Pencil 2 with its built-in magnetic wireless charging feature, which was actually terrible at launch for the iPad 10 because users had to get an adapter to connect the original Apple Pencil, so it was just a mess. But thankfully, Apple just released the brand new Apple Pencil USB-C, which conveniently allows you to use the same USB-C cable that comes in the box of the iPad for pairing and charging, and this one actually supports the magnetic attachment feature, but without the wireless charging. And best of all, it's only $79 compared to $129, so honestly, saving 50 bucks is worth it since you don't need to charge charge the pencil that often anyway. Now moving on to more differences, the iPad 10 actually has the advantage of coming with a landscape 12 megapixel front camera, which makes it look a lot more natural than the others that have the camera on the top right here. So it makes it look like you're looking at the side. And the reason they don't get it is because these iPad Pros have the wireless charging for the Apple Pencil right in the spot where the landscape camera would have gone. However, the display on the iPad 10 isn't as good as the rest because for one, it only supports sRGB colors compared to P3 wide color on the rest of the iPads. So you can see that the iPad 10 is the only one that doesn't show this WebKit logo. And it also doesn't get the same anti-reflectivity coating which comes on the rest of the iPads. But even worse, the display on the iPad 10 is not laminated to the glass like it is on all of the more expensive iPads, which is something that makes the display thinner and makes the blacks look darker. In fact, you can even see a gap between the display panel and the glass on the iPad 10, and you can even hear the difference when tapping on it. You can hear that it's actually hollow compared to solid displays on the rest. On top of that, it has the oldest chip, the A14 Bionic, which was known for getting hot and simply not performing as well as the rest. As you can see, it's the slowest in terms of single core performance, although not too far off from the A15 since that chip didn't have a big single thread jump. But multi-core is where you really see a big difference in performance with the A14 really lagging behind, especially with the iPad Pro's M2 chip being over twice as fast. And then graphics is where it really becomes worth spending extra cash 
for the better iPads for things like gaming and productivity work. Here, you can see that the iPad Pro is now almost three times faster than the A14 inside of the iPad 10. And you might think that over 45,000 points is overkill in terms of graphics, but the iPad Pro also comes with ProMotion 120Hz display technology, which means that it can refresh 120 times a second, so the display looks super smooth compared to 60 hertz on the rest of the cheaper iPads. And the 12.9 inch model also comes with mini LED technology, which makes the display look incredible with deep blacks, colors that really pop, and up to a thousand nits of brightness compared to 500 on the budget iPad. So with that said, you're probably thinking I'm gonna tell you that you should absolutely avoid the iPad 10, but honestly, no. This is the one I'm gonna recommend going into 2024 for three big reasons. Number one is that more people seem to be going on budgets this year, and this one is budget friendly at 350 bucks on Amazon. And number two is that when you stop looking at specific specs and features, it's still just as much of an iPad as the rest of them for regular iPad things like using apps, watching videos, playing games, and more. Sure, you won't get as as good of an experience with the worst display quality and slower speeds, but in reality, it's good enough for most people. It's also got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, which is great and will support a lot of accessories for years to come. And finally, reason number three is that I fully believe every single iPad in the lineup will be updated this year, and out of all of them, I believe this one will have the least amount of changes, seeing as it already has the landscape camera, the new modern design, and support for the budget Apple Pencil USB-C. Now moving on to the iPad Mini 6, this is honestly my favorite iPad because of the convenient size, fitting perfectly into your hands for gaming and watching videos, being so small and lightweight that it's just so comfortable to use. The performance is great, the display is laminated with P3 colors, it's got Touch ID at the top, and Apple Pencil 2 support with a USB-C port that's plenty fast. It's just a great iPad for iPad things, and I would recommend it even if a new one is on its way because honestly, I can't think of very many ways to make this better other than giving it the landscape camera. Yes, the new one will likely come with an A17 chip or maybe even M1 or M2, but it's plenty fast and ready for what I need, so it's a good pick. Now as for the iPad Air that I'm using as a teleprompter, the situation is the same, but I would honestly avoid this one because it's rumored to be getting an update soon with the potential of a new larger size and the M2 chip, which is quite a lot faster, and there might even be camera changes on the back as well. So to be honest, I would avoid getting the iPad Air right now. And finally, we have the iPad Pro models, which are the best and most expensive iPads. And for that reason, absolutely avoid them right now because you are gonna regret it. We've been getting tons of leaks and rumors that show that the new 2024 iPad Pro models are coming in around two months, with the first major redesign since 2018, including brand new state-of-the-art stacked OLED displays, a new Apple Pencil 3, the brand new M3 chip, larger display sizes, and much more. So if you've got enough cash for an iPad Pro, definitely wait until March for the new models. But if you don't have that much money or budget, I'd recommend going for either the iPad 10 right now for only 350 bucks on Amazon, or the iPad mini 6, which is also $100 off, so it's just 400 bucks. So hopefully this video helped you make a decision, and if it did, you'll find the links to the best iPad deals in the pinned comment below. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one right above. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.